Hey everybody, it's Martin at Flicking Feathers again, and today I'm tying uh, the Hans Van Klink and Leadhead, it's a case caddis pattern. Really effective, um, heavily weight it. You know, you can fish it in quite big water, so sort of. you might not fish another nymph. Um, it can, it's also a great anchor pattern. So I'm tying a size 10, but you can tie them and you can tie them up to about a 6 or down to a 14 um, and obviously adjust the the weighting to suit the rivers that you fish so this is a TMCO 5262 so it's a 2x long nymph hook and I'm just going to start on, I've got some uh, 140 UTC and olive but any, any thread and a sort of brown or olive colour will do fine. Just got to run on a wee base there, um, about half the shank length. And then I've got a non toxic split shot. You can, um, obviously, the original was tied with lead, but we don't use lead anymore. And I've got it on a piece of 12 pound nylon fluorocarbon. So I'm going to tie it in. I'm going to make sure that the split is facing forward so that the that it's trapped on and it can't fall off. And I'm going to take a few wraps over this the stocking island and then I'll pull I'll pull it until I get it positioned over the eye. And I'll tie it in the other end. Pull it nice and tight, and just keep taking that thread forward, tightening as you go. To and you can pull on it to make sure it's securely in place. Take a turn in front and around the mono. Lock that down. Now, you don't have to do this, but just for the extra security, but cut these the length of the shank and then I got a wee bit of super glue and then I'll tie over it and that just ensures that you know it's never it's never ever going anywhere. So for the Head or the peeping grub of the caddis. I'm going to take some virtual nymph, uh, nymph skin, thin skin, and caddis green. Cut it to a point. Now catch that. Catch the point. Now just pull it tight and tie it down, and I'll go right around the bend. all the way around and I'll bring my thread back to about in line with the hook point then I'll wind this forward under tension creating a sort of segmented exposed grub Come all the way up, when I get reach my thread, cross over it, two or three turns, always keep tension on it. Then stretch that, pull it away, and it just snaps back, you don't have a big tag. Then I'm going to just tie back till I'm about halfway between where the barb was and the point of the hook. Then for the legs, I've got to use a brown partridge feather. So from the sort of the back between the shoulders of the bird. Or you can just buy a packet. Uh, I want a fairly long fibred hackle. Try and 
trim away all the weight, all the fluff, all the sort of waste. And then I'm going to tie it in by the tip, so I'll just use my hackle pliers. Get a grip of it. And pull back the fibres to expose the tip. And then I'll offer this in. Take two or three wraps. And then I'll just wind this, folding it as I go. I'm just going to use up the whole hackle. I mean, it's obviously far more legs than the Akadis would naturally have. But it gives you a nice bit of sort of movement. Which combined with that sort of bright green tag is. You know, it's a trigger in it, it's an attractor. So, cover that up and I'll tie the stock down the length of the body. And I'll just snap it away, bring my thread back. I'm going to make a dubbing loop. So, a couple of turns. One around it to lock it, then advance your thread up to the front. Now, I always like to put a bit of wax on my on my dubbing loops. It just just gives you a bit more grip when you're loading them. So the cased section is just. Any kind of buggy natural dubbing, I'm using a mix of hair's ear or hair's mask um, and squirrel. Don't be shy. Oops. You can, can fairly load this up. You're better to have too much is not enough. So once you've got that loop reasonably well loaded, get your spinner. You can still adjust it. And when you're happy, it's been a nice tight rope. What I like to do now, there's always got to be a couple of few extra excess bits that have just not, not been actually trapped in the in the thread, and I just pull them off. So I can see sort of better what I'm working with. Now I'm just going to use the rotary function of my vice here to wind this. Um, but if you don't have it, you can just wind it hand over hand. And I'm just building up a fairly thick, shaggy body. Just letting it come all the way up to the the shot. And when I get there, catch it in. Cross my thread. And again, just to lock that in for security. Now, we've got to use Velcro. I'm just going to get the toothbrush and give it a wee brush just to sort of brush it out a wee bit make sure it looks nice and then very carefully I'll bring my thread 
under the split shot to the front here and a whip finish. And again. There you go. That's Hans van Klinken's lead head caddis. Very, very effective pattern. A good case caddis imitation. As I say, you can tie them in a range of sizes. I mean, depending on where you live, you might have caddises up to, you know, an inch and a half, an inch and three quarters long in their case, then a quarter inch. So. Tie them to shoot your area, but very effective, worth a place in your box. Tie them in a few weights, and I hope you catch some fish in them. Tie lines, guys. Bye.